Now, to finish part two, what I now have to do is go back and balance all the T accounts. Some of them are going to be pretty easy to balance. Some of them are going to be a little bit more difficult. Now, the way this works is cash, the very first T account, that's going to be the hardest one to balance. Because to balance accounts, what I have to see is how much it has on each side, and then I have to see which side is the largest. So in this case, we've got the 200,000, the 10,000, and the 5. So what I want to do there is add up all these credits. And of course, you'll just manually add this up. But I've got 215,000 in debits. I've got 33,600 in credits. Now, which one is larger? Clearly, the debit part of it is larger. So what's the difference between 215,000 and 33,600? That's a difference of 181,400. So that is going to be the, I'm going to bold that. That's the balance of cash right now. So like I said, you want to see how much you have on the debit side, how much you have on the credit side, whichever side is larger, and then take the difference. That's actually the hardest one to do because there's more on, more on it than any. Now accounts receivable, that one's going to be pretty easy because we've got 5,000 here and 5,000 here. Well, those two cancel each other out. So really all we have is on the debit side, the 10,000. That's all we really have in accounts receivable. Then office supplies is very easy. 2,500, they're both on the debit side, so that means it has a $2,500 debit balance. Prepaid insurance is easy. It was only used once for 7,000 and it's on the debit side. Same thing with prepaid rent, $5,600 on the debit side, nothing to calculate. Now office equipment was used twice 25 and 15, but they're both on the debit side and they both add up to 40,000. Now accounts payable, we had the $17,000 debit, $17,000 credit, they cancel each other out, and what we're left with is just the $500 on the credit side. Capital was only used once, 225,000, so obviously it has a $225,000 debit balance. Withdrawals was only used once, $3,000 on the debit side. Service revenue was actually used three times, but they're all credits, and they add up 10, 5, and 10, 25,000. So it has a $25,000 credit balance. And then finally, utilities expense had a $1,000 balance. So that's the balance of utilities expense. So now I have finished part two. I've posted and balanced my T accounts. And like I said, most of them are easy to balance. The most challenging one is cash, simply because it's used more than any other. But it's just a matter of seeing how much is on each side, seeing which side is the largest, and take the difference. So that finishes that part. Now I'm ready to do part three. Now part three, I'm supposed to do the trial balance. Now we talked about the trial balance back in our video lecture. The trial balance, this is part of our built-in system of checks and balances. I'm hoping that all the journal entries that I did were correct, and I'm hoping that all my T accounts are correct, and in a second, I'm gonna know if they are or not. Because on this trial balance, hopefully everything will balance out. So the way I set this up, I've just got the name of the company, Adams Company, trial balance. It is as of the end of January. Account title, I've just simply listed all the account titles from the chart of accounts. I have a column for debit, a column for credit, and I've already inserted a formula here that will total everything up at the bottom. Now what I want to do is get my balances off of my T accounts and plug those into my trial balance. Each account has a balance, but it's either going to be a debit or a credit balance. So what did we have for cash? Cash had a debit balance, 181,400. So 181,400 debit balance. 
What about accounts receivable? It had a $10,000 debit balance. So, 10,000. What about office supplies? 2,500. What about prepaid insurance? 7,000. Prepaid rent? 5,600 was the balance. Office equipment? 40,000 was the balance. And notice all those were assets and they all had debit balances. The next account is accounts payable. Now accounts payable has a $500 balance, but here's the catch. It's a credit balance. So on accounts payable, when I put that 500, got to put it on the proper place. It goes on the credit column. What about capital? Same thing, credit balance, 225,000. What about withdrawals? It's a debit balance, 3,000. So I go back over to the debit side, 3,000. Revenue, credit balance, 25,000. And then the last one is utilities expense, and it had a $1,000 balance on the debit side, so 1,000. So I plug in all the balances from my T accounts, and the way it looks is everything's in, in the right shape because I've got 250,500 in debits, 255, 250,500 in credits. So I'm always looking for that on my trial balance to see that I have equal debits to credits. Now when you do this on your homework problem, if you don't have an equal amount there, then automatically you know something's wrong. Chances are if something's wrong, it probably has to do with your journal entries. But then again, it could have something to do with these T accounts. So it all depends. So that's why in a problem like this, even though it's a lengthy problem, you know, mathematically speaking, it's pretty straightforward. Really the challenge is knowing your debits and credits on your journal entries and then being very methodical about how you transfer that to the T accounts and then ultimately to the trial balance. So that completes our first example on journal entries, T accounts, and trial balance.